Morning all. Okay, I hope you've seen the previous video to this prelude, the Torre win against Anatoly Karpov in 1976. Nigel Short got to play uh, play Eugenio Tor yesterday in the Olympiad, England versus Philippines. Uh, Nigel was outranking Eugenio uh, quite significantly. Nigel 2698, Eugenio Tor 2469. Uh, let's see how that game uh, um, played out. So d4, knight f6, we see actually a Nimzo Indian defense, knight c3 from Nigel, bishop b4. Nigel has a wide repertoire nowadays with both um, e4 and d4, it seems he's playing everything actually, even the English opening. So here, okay, queen c2, and now d6 from Eugenio Tor. So maybe later black is going to play for e5. After a3, black gives up the dark square bishop without even inflicting structural damage. But there's a bit of time loss um, incurred here. Queen e7, now g3. And then this early bishop d7, <laughs> which uh, um, looks very interesting here to be able to challenge the Fianchetto bishop, maybe. And indeed, after bishop g2, bishop c6 straight off the bat and contesting the e4 square so white plays a seemingly passive looking move here f3 just blunting this bishop but also imprisoning temporarily his own bishop and black reacts with d5 again locking down the e4 square b3 from Nigel and now black castles knight h3 as if the intention is knight f2 and then to play e4. But black has his own central intention here with rook e8. Potentially e5 is going to be made possible. White castles and now knight bd7. And indeed, now after a4 it looks as though, hang on, this might be useful, this bishop a3 to harass the queen. But black goes ahead and plays e5 anyway. Okay. White supports the d4 pawn actually with e3. Maybe bishop e3 is not so pleasant here on e takes in any case in this position. Let's just check that out. e3 might be, uh, in fact, engines like black's position here. e takes d4 might be quite good here. Queen e2. Okay. Just protects his pawn with e3 and now black plays knight f8. So where is this knight heading? If it goes to g6, is that nice for black? Knight f2, rook ad8. After knight d3, knight g6, it does support e5 from here, keeping this central tension going. Knight b4, and now d5 is supported with queen e6. Offering the other bishop up, of course, which isn't that active here on c6. It's taken. Queen takes c6. And okay, it's an interesting scenario we have now of the two bishops versus the two knights from a Nimzo Indian defense, with currently quite a lot of central tension as well thrown in the mix. White releases some of that central tension with d takes. But uh, on the other hand, you know this could be double-edged. If Black gets this uh, one of these rooks down infiltration, that could be dangerous here. Knight takes Bishop B2. On the other hand, you know the Bishop pair, this this Bishop, this battery looks dangerous potentially, or does it? Queen C5, Rook AD1, and now Knight C6, keeping a lockdown on B4, and also maybe d4 is going to be useful. Of course, he's also attacking e3 here. That has to be dealt with. Rook fe1. d4 is locked down really for white here now. But uh, Eugen just decides d takes c4. Doesn't mind about an exchange of rooks here. It's prompting that. Otherwise, rook takes d1 is a, is a bit painful. So rook takes d8, rook takes d8. And the queens come off. 
If they don't, then maybe C4 is a target. <clears throat> maybe C4 is a target anyway in this position, though. Um, so really, okay, Queen takes C4, offering Queen's coming off, and it, it is accepted. But there's this Rook infiltration, which looks very dangerous here. Rook D2. This Rook on the 7th maybe outweighs the Bishop pair. Rook B1 and now B6 against um, any Rook pressure. Okay, F4 hitting the Knight. The Knight goes to E7 here. Now E4 preventing maybe Knight F5. But now this knight starts dancing with knight d7. It can go to c5 and hit a4. Bishop a3, maybe discouraging knight c5 now. Absolutely, I think it can just be taken and then rook b8 here. So knight c6. And now e5 again hitting this knight now. Knight d4 though, another infiltration move. c5. Okay, are the bishops really that good here? h5, making some air for the king, and also h4 might be useful at some point. c takes, a takes. Now a5, trying to give rook, the rook some scope, some infiltration to b7. It's taken, rook b7. c7 is protected with knight e6 in this position. Okay, one question might be here, is isn't f5 possible? Is f5 at all possible? Nigel plays rook a7 in this position. Um, and then black played g6, maybe, you know, preventing f5. So in this position after f5, let's ask this question. f5 here, check, knight d4. Better for black. In fact, e6 is mentioned, not rook c7. If rook c7, knight e5, of course, e5 is loose here. These pawns are actually both attacked here with the two knights. So let's go with e6. Takes, takes. Knight e6 or knight f6. Doesn't look too hot for white, really. Okay, slightly better for black, maybe. A brief analysis. Rook a7, g6 locking down anyway on f5 now, giving up the a pawn. Now check. And okay, here, um, self pinning bishop f1. Was there an option? Was there an option of king f2 from Nigel here? Ouch, this looks like a nasty pin, uh, even though it's a very simplified position. King f2, could that have been an alternative? Check. Knight b6, menacing like this. Up here. Maybe it's about equal with, with best play. The move played um, by Nigel, this self pin doesn't look too healthy right now, but um, okay. c5. And there's a check. Rook a7. And in this position, actually, this is about to be victimized. Knight b6. And there's now a threat of knight c4 making use of that pin. Seems mighty unpleasant right now, this position. And in fact, after bishop b2. It's about to get a whole load worse. Knight c4 hitting the bishop. Where can it go uh, without allowing knight d2 winning this bishop? Goes to c3 and after, after rook c1, it's looking absolutely awful for white. It seems to be losing a piece by force. He resigns here. Nigel resigned here. <clears throat> but let's have a look at bishop e1. Does that offer bishops to 
Okay, so where did I I shall go wrong anyway? Um, it seems and White was doing okay here from an engine point of view. Um, C5. Okay, so there was a check thrown in here. Um, in this position, Rook A6 has been cried out for by the engines, not um, Rook A7. Rook A6. Interesting, it would stop this maneuver, Knight B6 to C4. It's difficult with this pin though, really. Um, so let's go with Rook A1. If we have this sort of position, well, at least White isn't losing a piece just yet. And there might be a resource, okay, keeping on the A file like that. So what happened was a bit of a disaster because knight b6 is is a horrible threat now knight c4 um, and after knight c4 here okay uh, rook a2 knight e3 let's go with that here rook a1 rook d2 okay not losing a piece immediately bishop c1 That could be better with knight takes f1 in this line. Two knights versus the rook there, otherwise losing the h pawn. So it is tricky. These, this knight infiltration was very, very tricky and heavily pronounced in the game continuation after rook c1 here. Whoa. So anyway, um, congratulations to um, Eugenio Tour there on beating. Nigel Short has been having otherwise a fantastic tournament. Um, so let's have a look again. Nims of Injun with a vengeance, not just giving up one bishop but two. So a lot of central tension. Black soon arriving in this situation of the two knights versus the two bishops. But um, there's a rook infiltration which changes the picture in this ending position. The knight's very, very agile. This rook infiltration on it looked good. Um, maybe black's rook infiltration is more significant here. This menacing knight coming to c4 especially. Okay. Um, con congratulations again to Eugene Autor, a veteran of the Olympiads. Um, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.